been hunting since I was old enough to walk, but I actually started hunting when I was about eight years old. Killed my first deer at eight and have killed one every year since. Just love being outdoors, the atmosphere, and just spending time with all my buddies in the outdoors, hunting, fishing. The pigs, I mean, they come in and they eat all the native natural food sources for the deer. They uh, root up and just take away from the habitat from the deer and the turkeys and pretty much all the natural native habitat. They just destroy it. This area is known for a lot of hunters and it would take away a sport that a lot of people do around here and a way of life for some. been a labor of love, really, just enjoyed all of it. I've got memories about probably every square foot of it, and all of my kids and my wife, and we all worked on it, and the kids found out there wasn't any free lunch. <laughs> I'm fourth generation in pecans, third generation on this farm, and grew up with it. It's home, it's my life, it's part of my family. Um, it is a family member. I look out across the pastures and the trees and I see my dad. And it's a good, it's a good happy place. It's a good feeling. We have a lot of uh river bottoms and a lot of pecans in this area. Okmulgee County has one of the largest numbers of native and seedling trees of any county in the country. The river bottoms are conducive to pecan growth. It's low river land, it floods on occasion, so it's wet. And this is where the hogs do most of their damage and this is where they travel to get onto our property. I don't have a record of it, but it's been about uh, 20 years ago, maybe 25, that we first started getting some hog damage. Hogs have been a problem for us for quite a few years. Uh, they started out small and we'd see a few now and then, but they started growing pretty rapidly. Like this, there's a, this keeps you, this is not near as deep, but it still keeps you from harvesting. And, and this kind of stuff is spread all over the, all over the orchard, you know, different spots. The general costs for these hogs on my place are one, loss of crop. Doesn't mean the crop's not there, it means I can't harvest it because there's big holes everywhere and the harvesters, uh, they need smooth, uh, manicured ground. They need the grass. They need it not to have any imprints can't even begin to get under the trees where the hogs have, have created big holes. But the other cost that we incur is every spring I send somebody down and they spend three to four weeks down there smoothing out all the hog damage that they can find. That's a pretty big cost. The only way you start convincing people is when they start seeing the damage. When they walk across the field and they almost twist their ankles when they step off in the holes. Uh, you don't have travel 
convincing people that own land that actually operate it. And we try to remediate the area where they've rooted, uh, which is time consuming, and then they come right back. The problem is that it has doubled every year from what it was the year before. And last year it went up about four times. Last year I thought we probably lost about 10% of our crop. They're just absolutely devastating. Uh, a lot of these trees, a lot of the pecans in here won't be harvestable because uh, the machines just can't pick through that. So we'll get what we can, but we won't get them all. There's a lot of people hunting with dogs in that sport. That, that doesn't control the hogs. If you go out with dogs and you have a, hogs out there, you may kill one or two, but the rest of them scatter. You know, hunting, hunting is a, it's an option. And I'm not opposed to shooting hogs, especially when you see the big boars by themselves. But when you have the sounder, the family groups, I will normally not shoot at those. I just note where they are and then I begin to try and prep to trap them. We have other methods that we use, um, thermal shooting at night. There's a, there's a time when you have to realize that this isn't, this is these farmers and ranchers' livelihood. It's not a game to them. Uh, they need these feral hogs gone. They don't need somebody to come out with a dog to catch one or two hogs and, and leave. They need somebody to come out here and euthanize these hogs. The advantage of trapping is that we stand a chance of catching the whole sounder that's working when we're not. And if there's 25 pigs in a sounder, we stand a chance of getting all 25 of them. With the, with the traps set up the way they are, sometimes they get uh, 10, 12, 15 at a time. If it wasn't for the trapping, uh, there's no tell. They just, you couldn't live here. On our place in particular, uh, between our federal trapper and myself and the traps that we use and my neighbors that, that uh, hunt the hogs, we take anywhere from 100 to 150 hogs a year off this place and all we're doing is just maintaining a, a, a level field. There's figures that came out of Texas from the Department of Agriculture in Texas this year that said that if you would have to kill 70% of the hogs in order just to hold your own from one year to the next. And there's no way you're gonna kill 70% of them. If we didn't do anything, they would completely take the place over. They reproduce over twice a year. It's like in six months, their young will be having young. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of going backwards. I, I don't have the answers. Uh, all I've done is, on our place, we do all that we can to, uh, to eliminate them, or at least to slow them down as much as possible. And I don't know what the true answers are. You just, uh, you just keep working at it, and you try to use every angle you can to uh, keep the orchard going and keep it productive and profitable. Well, it really does, I mean, my dad's been gone for four and a half years, and. He's right here. And I'd come home in, from college and, you know, 
health colleges, you know, things are always bug bugging you. And you just go for a ride. Dad wouldn't say a word. You know, just go for a ride, usually through the orchard. You'd come back, you'd feel a lot better. Oh, I, I, it would be devastating to lose it. <clears throat> We're on our fourth generation down here now, and uh, my oldest son has taken over a whole lot of the operation that I used to do. Oh, it, it would be, uh, it'd be unthinkable to lose it.